I'm not at home on crowded streets. They don't appeal to me. In the heart of God's cathedral is where I want to be. So I take the outside circle when the stars are growing dim. See the morning light play shadows all along the canyon rim. I feel the prairie wake and flush a dozen bob white quail as I guide my favorite cow horse down a rough and rocky trail. I ride through mountain country, gaze across the great divide as I trail majestic mustangs that no man will ever ride. A red-tailed hawk is screaming as he searches for his prey. And the cottonwoods are yellow on this crisp November day. I crave the open spaces where the sky is blue and wide. Somewhere west of Wall Street is where my heart and soul reside. Hi, I'm Red Stegall. Join me as we explore another trail somewhere west of Wall Street. Today, we're gonna to take a look at the horses of the four sixes. The Four Sixes Ranch, with its headquarters in Guthrie, Texas, is as legendary as its founder, Samuel Burke Burnett. Known simply as Burke, Burnett was born in Missouri in 1849, but came to Texas with his family in about 1857. When Burke was 17, his father sent him with a herd of cattle on a trail drive to the markets in Kansas. When he was 19, Burke went up the trail again, this time as the boss. He had gone into the cattle business for himself a little earlier when he bought a hundred head of cattle bearing the 4-6 brand. With title to the cattle, he also received ownership of the brand, and that dispels the often repeated story about how Burke, in a poker game, won the 4 Sixes ranch with a hand of 4 Sixes. Burke knew the value of a good horse, and down through the years, the 4 Sixes has had some good ones. As Burke built his 4 Sixes ranch, he married Ruth Lloyd, daughter of Fort Worth banker M.B. Lloyd, and in honor of his father-in-law, Burke branded all his horses with an L on the left shoulder, and that continues to be the Four Sixes horse brand. Burke and Ruth had three children, but only one, Tom, lived to become an adult. Tom worked for his father for a number of years, but in the early 1900s, he went out on his own and established the Triangle Ranches, one at Iowa Park and the other one at Paducah, Texas. Tom and his wife, Olive, had one daughter, Anne Valiant Burnett, who in later years became known throughout ranching circles in the Southwest as Miss Anne. George Humphreys, who had gone to work for the Four Sixes in 1918, became foreman of the ranch in 1932 and immediately set about upgrading the remuda. He bought 20 good brood mares and put them on a stud that Tom Burnett had sent over from the Triangles. The stud was by midnight and some on the ranch called him Scooter. Tom Burnett thought he'd make a good stud for what George was trying to get done. Scooter did do a good job, but he wasn't the horse that George liked to talk about when he was asked about the horses on the four sixes. That honor belonged to Hollywood Gold. Fold in 1940 on the Triangle Ranch west of Iowa Park, he was by Gold Rush, a stud that Miss Ann had bought on a trip to California and out of a mare called Triangle Lady 17. Lige Reed, the manager of the Triangles, knew instantly that Hollywood Gold was gonna be a cow horse. But someone else had been watching the colt too. And George Humphreys told Miss Ann that he wanted to bring him to the sixes and raise some cow horses. At first, Miss Ann refused George, but when she finally relented, Lige pleaded with her to cut off his right arm, but leave him Hollywood Gold. But she didn't change her mind again. Soon George was riding Hollywood Gold to work cattle on the sixes, and when spring came around that next year, the Dunn stud was turned out with a band of mares. And among those mares were some daughters of another stud that Tom Burnett had bought, one called Joe Hancock. Joe Hancock was a progenitor of the Hancock line of horses that stayed with us down through the years. He was foaled in 1923 by a horse that had formerly been owned by the J.A. Ranch, a son of Peter McHugh, named John Wilkins. He was bred by John Jackson Hancock, who lived up in the Canadian breaks of the northern Texas panhandle. That colt was so good looking that John's son, Joe, bought him. Joe thought he could run and sent the unnamed colt to Bird Ogle in Oklahoma to race. Ogle called him Joe Hancock after his owner, and after beating everyone for miles around, Ogle found that he couldn't get anyone to match the colt. In 1931, Ogle's son, George, paid Joe Hancock the man $1,000 for Joe Hancock the horse. 
George then turned around and sold him to Tom Burnett for $2,000. Supposedly, Tom Burnett said that Joe Hancock was the finest horse he had ever seen. Miss Ann took over both the four sixes and the triangle ranches. Therefore, George Humphreys had plenty of those good Joe Hancock daughters to cross on Hollywood Gold. But there's still another horse that people mention when they talk about the foundation of the four sixes horses. Miss Ann bought Gray Badger II in 1949 and immediately put him on some daughters of Joe Hancock and Hollywood Gold. On the sixes, he raised some good cow horses that the cowboys really enjoyed riding. And his daughters also produced some great horses, including Two-Eyed Jack and Peppy Sand Badger, which most people know today as Little Peppy. There were other good stallions on the four sixes too, including a son of the thoroughbred three bars called C bars. The ranch raised some good cow horses by crossing him on those daughters of Joe Hancock, Hollywood Gold, and Gray Badger too. Miss Ann only had one child, a daughter who she also named Ann, and who today is married to John Marion. Mrs. Marion sold the Triangle Ranches and concentrated all of her efforts on the Four Sixes. Today, its horse program is one of the best in the country. Managed by the ranch's resident veterinarian, Dr. Glenn Blodgett, the Sixes stand from 15 to 20 of the top racing performance and ranch quarter horse stallions found anywhere in the world. And in 1993, the Four Sixes was honored by the American Quarter Horse Association with its Best Remuda Award. When we come back, we'll be right here at the ranch to visit with Dr. Glenn Blodgett, the manager of the horse division of the world famous Four Sixes Ranch. Stay with us. I always look forward to the opportunity to visit with Dr. Glenn Blodgett about the horses of the Four Sixes. Dr. Blodgett, <clears throat> there are a lot of things that have happened since this ranch was founded because they used to take a stallion and turn him out with a band of broodmares. And that's the only broodmares that saw him. And so you had a, a group of mares that year after year produced offspring of that particular stallion. A lot of things have changed since then, haven't they? Yes, sir, they sure have, Red. Uh, we, you know, we're fortunate today to have technology that lets us do that uh, through artificial insemination. And, uh, and you can, uh, using that technology, you can, you can spend a little more money on genetics because you can, uh, you can uh, utilize it to a greater extent. Uh, whereas when you so-called pasture breed, as you mm -hmm. described, you, you know, you're limited probably to a 25, 30 mare maximum per stay and per year. And uh, through artificial insemination, you know, we can breed well over a hundred if necessary. Uh, and, uh, and also in, in, in breeding a stay and through that method, uh, I think you can you can care for him in a safer manner. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't run the risk of him getting a leg broke in the pasture, getting struck by lightning, uh, or or other other severe debilitating injury that might occur in a pasture situation. And um, and he's 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 cared for in a more sheltered, a more secure environment. You can identify things such as colic. Uh, in, in a quicker manner than, and uh, he, head off some some illnesses quicker than you might could if he were running in a pasture. So, you know, that way a horse uh, staying, he, li he lives a longer life and he, he gets to spread his genetics a little further than he, than he would if he were just running in a pasture once a year with 25 or 30 mares. And you collect him in a controlled environment and collect that semen so that you can dilute it and do all the things you do in your laboratory. And you can breed a lot more mares and you can breed a lot more mares at the same time. That's with, right. With each time you collect That's them. right. And then we, we also have the ability of, of sharing those genetics or selling those genetics to other people uh, and let them, you know, I guess share in our progress here as far mm -hmm. as uh, uh, 
you know, breeding to some of these superior horses. And, uh, uh, you know, through, through technology that we have today, you know, we can, we can ship what we call cool transported semen all over the United States. Uh, we, we can ship frozen semen uh, internationally. Um, as well as breed other mares on site here, uh, other people's mares that might want to come in and breed to them as well, besides our own. Mm -hmm. So you have a chance to not only protect the genetics of your mare herd, but you have a chance to increase the, the availability of really outstanding mares to that stallion that you'd never have if you were just pasture breeding him to 25 or 30 mares. That's right, I mean, we can even utilize through through by breeding to other mares we can uh, like you said you know some real superior performing mares mm -hmm. uh, other bloodlines of mares that we may not have here and uh, through those through those methods we we identify uh, what's the what's the best cross uh, you know if we if we just utilize our own mares, we may not ever capture that so-called best cross or best nick with that stallion. Now, the genetics of the brood mare band on this ranch had, goes back for several generations and has been very instrumental in the development of the kind of horses that you have on the ranch. And even probably in some of your race horses, some of those genetics are, are very important. How do you protect that gen genetic base of your broodmare band? Well, you, you, you have to carefully do it because, uh, you know, you can, you know, so, some of these mares or mare families, if, if you know, you can, they, they can rock along there and have several horse coats in a row and maybe have only one or two fillies. And uh, if something happens to one of those fillies, or both of them, you can suddenly wake up some one day and not have, you know, any any offspring uh, to further that mare family's genetics in in your program. So you've got to be aware of that happening to you, uh, and and try to plan for it as best you can, uh, and and be careful. You know, if you've identified a family you want to perpetuate. You know, give yourself a little cushion, uh, and and try to make sure you you keep enough of those females to 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 have that cushion. Uh, Sometimes that's very difficult too, because the cowboys don't ride those mares. That's right. So you might not know which of those mares produces the best cow horse, or is easier to ride, or has the most cow sense, because she's had those. She's had those gildings, but you really, I mean, the... the she may have the, had fillies. She may have had fillies. That's right. And you so, know, uh, that's difficult. It's too, kind of it? a catch-22 there, you know. You, you know, if a mare, like you say, if a mare has a number of fillies in a row right to start with, you may not know for sure, even though we do ride those fillies for a short time, and we do put a few of them in training and show them, but you really might not be able to identify that you've got that top mare there, if unless she's been having some horse coats along. So, well, I know how important the '99 uh, brand is on that jaw because I've had several of those '99 <laughs> horses, and they've all been really good ones. So, they're being good, yeah. That mare line uh, really made a lot of difference in the in the working horses. It's it's my favorite. These symbols behind me are some of the most respected and recognized brands in the livestock industry. The genetics developed and maintained in the bloodlines of the horses of the four sixes continue to heavily influence the American Quarter Horse worldwide. As a winner of the Best of the Ramuda Award from the AQHA, the four sixes ranch will continue through technology and diligent attention to the genetics of their horses to have a major impact on the quarter horse breed. If we talk about the conformation of a ranch horse, what do you think the, the cowboys need and, and the abilities of the cowboys? Uh, they, they got a lot of uh, real long trots in the morning, so they want something to ride smooth. That's I right. know that for sure. Well, well something that, that helped me, uh, you know, here, and, and I think it's, it's helped me 
in making a lot of my breeding decisions is, is, is for the first 15 years I was here at the ranch, you know, I'm working on uh, 32 now, but for the first 15, I spent a good deal of time riding with the men mm -hmm. during, during our uh, two big works every year. Uh, you know, the, the weaning and, the, and then, of course, the, the branding in the spring. Uh, and, and through that process, you know, I was able to really identify what we needed to produce in the way of a ranch horse. The, you know, you mentioned the smoothness, you know, when you trot around these big pastures, uh, oh, you know, you want something, you want something smooth, you want something that, uh, that knows how to travel in this, in this rougher terrain. You know, we've got a lot of uneven, uh, rocky terrain here and, uh, uh, you, you've got to have a, a horse with a good back on him that'll hold the saddle where you don't have to cut him in two with a girt, keep a saddle on his back. And, uh, you know, we, we've got to have horses with, with stamina, a lot of, a lot of heart and stamina. Cause they, you know, these pastures are, are big here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and particularly during the summer months, it's a challenge on the horses, uh, war the warmer months, uh, to, especially the men that go around the outside, you know, uh, the young bucks. Yeah, the young guys that <laughs> go around the outside. You know, that outside man and, and probably the three or four that back him mm -hmm. up, um, you know, they really got to be a horseback. The guys going up the middle, you know, they, you know, they, on the drive, they may not do too much, but once they get the pin, they do a lot. So, yeah. um, but, but cow sense is important. Uh, stamina, like I mentioned, you've got to have good feet and legs on them, lots of bone, uh, a real good hoof quality. Uh, you know, you don't want a, a hoof that's uh, going to break off and shale off mm -hmm. on a horse. And, uh, uh, you know, it takes a lot of driving power behind. You know, they've got to have be well muscled in their rear yeah. end. Um, all, all the conformational traits that, that lend toward a, toward a smooth traveling horse. Are, are, are real important, you know, and a, a sloping shoulder, uh, uh, you know, a, a little slope to their pasture and a little angle to their hock, all that type of stuff's important. Uh, of course, we all like to ride a good looking horse too. Oh, you bet. Uh, one with a pretty head, you know, a big soft eye, you know, a, you know, a lot of width between their eyes and a big soft eye are real indicative of, of an intelligence in a horse. So. So those types of things are, are, all, are all important. Uh, the way that neck comes, fits into their, comes out of their shoulders is important, you know, and it's, uh, uh, it, but that, that experience I gained working with the men, actually doing it myself, watching them work, really helped me identify, I think, what we needed. You know, I, I knew what a horse, the conformational looks from just what, what a pretty horse was or a structurally correct horse, but a lot of the things dealing with stamina, uh, the conformation of a good back, uh, I really, and, and certainly traveling of a horse were, were, all, were all important to me. Well, Doc, I applaud you for protecting the genetics and improving the genetics where you can and where you need to, and keeping the world famous four sixes horses healthy and, and, and doing a good job of that and making sure that the cowboys have something to ride and uh, being the first to cross the line at the racetracks. I applaud you for that. Thank you so much. Thanks for riding along with us. We hope we taught you something about the cowboy you didn't know or maybe brought back an old memory. Until we meet again, I want to leave you with something to think about. Don't interfere with anything in the Constitution. That must be maintained, for it is the only safeguard of our liberties. Abraham Lincoln said that. So until next week, listen for us on Cowboy Corner on your local radio station. Be sure to join us right here as we explore another trail somewhere west of Wall Street. Adios, my friends.